was at the entrance as you're driving up to the main entrance of the mountain bike trail. But that whole thought was, originally, and still is, is to provide support to the mountain bike trail. So you'd have a facility that would accomplish that. So as you can see, there has been a commitment on behalf of the city and the county from day one to not only build the mountain bike trail, but to expand it and to provide the support facilities necessary in order to support those activities. And we want to continue doing that. So at this time, what I'd like to do is I'd like to probably introduce uh, Gary, do you want to make some comments specifically, maybe just round off what the intent of the project is? Sure, sure. And then we can then move forward to the next phase. Well, again, I really want to thank you all for coming out tonight. Again, this meeting is to reach out to you to try to get your input and to educate and, and to give you a heads up as far as what's going on. I've been working up on the North Point. My name is Gary Milano, and I used to work for Durham, the Department of Environmental Resources Management. And during my time there, I was doing coordinating restoration efforts, uh, habitat restoration, putting back natural features back into our area. And I was working up at the North Point. Back then, the North Point was totally off the radar. Nobody knew about it. Basically, the whole North Point you see there was basically a dumping ground for dredge material historically when they created government cut, the big channel where the cruise ships come in as well as cargo ships. And they put the fill here, and that's why you've got this amazing topography. There's some areas that are almost 45 feet above sea level where naturally here in Miami-Dade County, 18 feet is about it as far as the natural elevation. So we had some amazing fill that was deposited, and this was all sanctioned as far as approved through everyone as far as to create government cut. Well, when I got there back in the mid-90s, I started to do restoration work. And you can see the top part where it's kind of a black and white, area 14-8. Uh, I started to work that area where we started to restore wetlands. And a lot of you that use the bike trails have seen those wetlands in there, as well as dune areas that we've done. Then we started to go through a master planning process back in the mid-2000. Uh, 2005, we started to talk about what are we going to do with Virginia Key? And we've got uh, approximately 400 people in the community together to talk about it. And a lot of you were at this meeting. We worked very closely with the mountain bikers. We automatically saw that this area up here was prime territory for mountain biking. So this was something that was always something that was envisioned, the, the concept, the vision, passed on to different people in government. And we started to kind of get partnerships, try to get monies and then we started to work through this master planning process to identify areas where mountain biking could take place. Well, not only was there mountain bike bikers at the table, but also other stakeholders. We also had, and as you know, the community, there's a broad spectrum of people that like to go out on weekends just to look through the binoculars to look at the birds. But we've got environmentalists, we've got people that like our advice, we've got people that like to go to the beach, and so on and so forth. So we had this overall grouping that we had to come to some consensus as far as an understanding and agreement as far as how we were going to divvy out the different areas and work in the future. Well, what it was is, and you can see in this map, area one was the area that was primarily designated for mountain biking in this area. Um, areas eight at the top and areas 14 were basically restoration areas. And then the area on the left-hand side, area nine, is all natural mangroves. So that's something that we didn't want to impact. And when you go into the blue area off of Virginia Key, you get into a very beautiful preserve. It's a state uh, preserve where it's beautiful, you know, the bird life, the marine life, and uh, manatees. This is a place where we have some of, you know, Miami-Dade County was impacted so heavily developmentally that there's very few fragments of habitat that we still have. And west of Virginia Key, we do have a beautiful shoreline. If you were to go back into aerials and look back in the 1900s, early 1900s, that area would pretty much be the same. There were some changes with the sewer plant, but most, of, most, you know, most, mostly it still had a beautiful seagrass area, a beautiful mangrove shoreline, etc. So, and again, getting more into detail about this, Area 7 was a site that I worked in back in the early 2000s where we were actually trying to plant natives in the summer. And as Juan was saying, this was an area that just recently, approximately a year ago, 
started to talk with uh, you know Tom and some of the board of directors and, and some of the trail builders, and we agreed to provide for additional trail areas because you know I was hearing that you needed more mileage of your trails to draw in more sponsors to get bigger events, and you know I really do have a feel for your desire to ride, and I see how popular it is, and you know this is something that we realize that we need to kind of work with you to try to provide that space that you need. So area seven was something that we opened up within the last year. This was a conservation area that was opened up Miami Dade in the city of Miami. It, it, you can just see downtown Miami and we're thinking we have ideas for that area too, not only mountain biking, but just pedestrian sort of visual access to Miami. It's a beautiful place. I mean you can get people up in there to be able to see Miami from there. So this my, Virginia Key is really a, a jewel in the rough. And what we've been trying to do is to try to kind of do little touches to it to make it nicer and nicer. And I think we've come a long way. I mean, if you look back 10 years as far as how far we've come to the North Point and, and other parts, and I could go on and on about restoration, and we're going to have Juan Fernandez come up and talk about some of the restoration on Virginia Key. But we're, we're trying to address all of these things. Um, and, and it brings us here today. What we have done in the last five years, ever since the master plan was actually approved by the city of Miami back in 2010, we've been out seeking funding for the restoration. And I'm going to add on, see the 13, that area 13. Well, in addition to that, you see a 6 over to the right. Well, 6 and 13 are the two restoration areas. The 6, as you can see in the legend, which is over to the right, um, enhanced beach, public beach, you know, as far as, uh, and so what we're trying to do there is we're going to be restoring a dune area in there. And that beach is beautiful. I, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to go down to that beach, but when the tide's coming in, looking out over uh, the cut, it's just like turquoise water. You feel like you're in the Bahamas. I mean, it really is a special place. So here again, it's trying to open up public access, public beach. It's not something we're going to do right away. It's something because we don't have the manpower to really manage it properly. We're going to be holding off and opening it up to the public. But yet you, as bicyclists, will be able to have that opportunity to be able to be there and to be able to see it. Um, again, you have to take a step back when you look at restoration and try to kind of get the vision as far as what it's going to look like. The North Point has a lot of exotic trees on it. We are not going to be coming into the North Point to take all the trees down. What I've been trying to do is to try to get the environmental community and the biking community together so that we can build trails with natives. And if we take down an exotic, we put up a native that's sort of concept. And I think that's something that we can work on in a long time. And we'll here. see how it goes. And I'm not pushing it, but it's something I think that would be really a very positive step because, again, Juan's going to talk a little bit about the benefits of natural habitat versus exotics. But going into more detail about 6 and 13, um, let's go to the next slide, Michelle. <clears throat> this is looking from Fisher Island to the north, looking south, and you can see the sword plant in the background, and the landfill is that big white area over there that they put a lot of fill on recently. And basically, we're going to be working over on the left-hand side of this photo. Am I blocking anybody? You can get out of the way. We're going to be looking at the left-hand side over here, the, the trees, and be bringing it out just about two hands out if you were to kind of get up there. So again, getting back to the master plan, it's about 500 feet um, from the beach line. You can see where 13 edge, where that dark green and the, the other, the two tones of green are, that's basically the line in the master plan. Now, I think we're going to have to modify that because you'll see in a couple more slides, there's been a lot of trails that have been built on that edge. And, and again, this is something that there's adjustments that need to be made. Um, this is again, this is a master plan concept that we're trying to work from. In the foreground, you can see some of the restoration work that we talked about, and you can see the turn trail, which is in the going up to the slope before you get to the very dense tree line. Everybody see that okay? Um, okay, Michelle, why don't we go to the next one? So this is back in when we started the master plan in 2010, we got everybody together and we started to walk the site. This was before the trails were built. Um, we talked about the areas the trails should be built in, you know, the areas 
based on the master plan. And you can see that big white area over there to the left. This is something that we're going to be trying to work with the group when we're taking fill out of the area 6 and 13, the restoration area. We're going to be working with the trail builders to make new trails. And this is going to give us an opportunity to plant natives in the new trails. And this is something where, you know, I'm hoping that we'll be able to get Saturday and Sunday to get you guys to help and we'll get environmental groups. We've got a lot of people in the community that, that like to work with the environment. And we might be able to help you build trails with natives to see how they work, to, to convince you that to see that we can get fast growth in natives. Um, I've done a lot of work with different community groups, and one big thing that everybody says to me is, well, you're going to be taking out these casuarinas, these exotic trees, and yes, I understand that it doesn't have a benefit for the habitat, but I'm not going to see a tree, a shade tree, in my lifetime. Well, I can show you that within five years, a native will grow 25 feet. We have so much rain down here that we get very fast growth rates, and it is possible to get you some shade. And that's something that, you know, I'll be happy to give you presentations at your club meetings because I have some great slides where a tree is that high, 36, and in five years it's 25 feet high. So we can do that. Uh, but, you know, I, I just want you to understand that by putting in natives, you can still get the same trail experience and you'll still get the shade. And that's something that we don't want to necessarily try to do it in areas that you're working in right now. But when we create new trails in that white area, with the fill that we're going to be taking out of area 6 and 13, this will give us the opportunity to work together, to see how it works. And then we can, we've can we been talking with the board to see if we can get more fill for your site. And people are always looking for materials of opportunity as far as to get rid of it. So there's always dredging projects that are going to be coming up in the future. They're looking for ways to get rid of it cost effectively. So there's lots of possibilities. And so I think you know we have to keep positive about you know we can build new trails within the areas that we haven't built trails now and we can possibly put <clears throat> natives in those areas. So this is what it looked like after the trails were developed and if you go on to your website you'll see this basically uh, as far as the trails and again you can see an area over to the right where there's trees except for two. Uh, that trail up on the north side was something that was put in unauthorized, but at this time nobody's, you know, been, been complaining about it. So at this point, I think it's going to stay. But again, I don't, we're not the property owner. The city of Miami is, and that's why Juan, and I really want to thank Juan Pascual for coming tonight because it, it's really a good opportunity for us to have an open discussion about this. So again, getting back to areas 6 and 13, this is what it looked like um, a year ago. Basically, and this is what if you pull up on your website, you'll get. And Michelle, if you'll go to the next slide, you can see these yellow lines. Those are trails that have been built within the last year, except for the one down at the bottom. That's an abandoned trail um, that was proposed. And correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but it's not something that's in use at this time. But anyway, um, one thing that we ran into with this trail, and no one really realized, as you know, when you go out to the site, you kind of get lost in the site sometimes. So you don't know really where you are. And some of these areas, th this, there's a very structured process with the city of Miami and an agreement with the bike club that any new trail to be built need to go through Juan Pascual and the city. And this was a trail in the center that kind of got away from us in that it was built unauthorized and unfortunately some of the areas where you see the water body the turquoise water body well that's a wetland and there's some very specific federal state and local laws that do not allow work in wetlands without a permit and unfortunately those trails not only were built in the restoration zone but they were built in a wetland area where the property owner the city of miami can be liable for that as far as Ish, you know, issuance of notice of violations from regulatory agencies. So that's something that we've been talking to the board about. And I, from what I'm hearing, it's no problem to take those portions of the trail out right away because that's something if we don't take those trails out right away, then the city of Miami is going to get into a legal issue with the federal, state, and local regulatory agencies. And that's not what we want because that's going to burn all the bridges. But anyway, let's, let's make the assumption that those trails are going to be removed out of the wetlands. You know, 
whenever we can. I mean, we need to do this pretty fast. I mean, within, I would say within the next 30 days. Uh, but I'm going to leave that for another discussion. The big thing here today is we wanted to show you what, where we're proposing to work and what the timelines are. Um, in the very heavily cross-hashed areas where the blue line is, this is an area where we're proposing to go in within 60 days and start clearing the exotics out. So within areas 6 and 13, according to the master plan map that I showed you, we're going to be taking out all exotics, putting in natives. Now, there being that there's a trail system in there, an unauthorized trail system, we're going to need to have a discussion with the city of Miami about how we're going to deal with the trail that was unauthorized and that was built in an area that's slated for restoration. Let me just explain to you the fact that when we have our restoration dollars, when we have to get off the heavy equipment, park the heavy equipment, and then mobilize crews of men to go out to start doing the work, the costs skyrocket. So that means the effort that we're going to have to put into an area that has trails in it to clear it without impacting trails is going to go up. That's not a good thing, but again, that's something I want you to understand that that's it's an issue as far as the cost of the project going up. Getting back to the schedule, I know you can't read this down in the lower left as far as the legend, but that real heavily arid cross-hatching is going to be cleared within 60 days. We'll probably start, and it's a two-month project. Should the contractor says 30 days, we'll see. Then phase two will be the burden removal in that area. So that trail, that entrance trail as you know it, is going to go away, and it's going to be a beach dune habitat. It's going to be, we're going to try to expand the beach line up. We're, going to, we're requesting funds through NOAA right now to see if we can complement the sand that's there to enhance turtle nesting because turtle nesting, that's one of the really good areas on the island for turtles right now. And if we can expand that beach line, we'll be able to make a better habitat. That doesn't mean that people will not be able to recreate. This is a public beach. This is something just like all of our other beaches we have public recreation on. So it's not something where when we do restoration, you're going to be not allowed to go into it. This is going to be open to you. All of this will be open to you. We, you know, you again will be able to experience the the gains that we'll be able to get here as far as putting in native vegetation, putting in a nice beach. When you go to Cape Florida, Cape Florida is one of the most popular beaches in the state. This is what we're doing, the same concept that you see at Cape Florida. A beach line, a turtle nesting area, a dune, sea oats is going to be, we're going to leave the water area there. And then behind that, in area 13 to the left where the mountain bike trails are, we're going to be putting in hammock trees. Now, the topography within the hammock, the, within the trail system that was built, we may not be able to go in and to flatten it out and do some modifications. We're going to have to kind of see how that goes uh, with Juan and, and, and the city of Miami. Phase two is going to be the barren removal. Phase three is going to be the exotic removal within the left-hand side of area 13. And then we're going to be planting it all the whole area with native trees and dune species. Um, all of this we have the funds available for, and this is something where today we just wanted to open the door with you so that there's no surprises. We're going to try to put up an interpretive signage. We've worked with the trail builders to build a new trail. That red line that you see, that will be your new entrance trail coming into the different trail system. Um, so at this point, I think I'm going to pass it on to Juan Fernandez. Gary. Yes. Can I make one clarification? Sir? One translation? So sometimes it's hard to orient from a map, right? So speaking our language, this is pretty much that guardrail and highway to hell extension eastward. This, there's no, this, this is a graphic representation of a wetland, so if you're thinking, where do I ride over water, yeah, yeah. this doesn't represent a lake per se, this represents a wetland. Yeah, and a wetland, let me clarify the wetland. Wetland is an area that has, is low, it doesn't have public water, but has wetland species, it's jurisdictional wetlands, and this is something where it gets to be 
very specific and very complex as far as the definition, but it's something that if a regulatory agent went out and saw the trail system in there, there would be a NLP going out, notice of violation to the city of Miami as far as telling them that uh, they need to remove that material or else they're going to get fined. And we don't want to go there. So, And I don't think that's an issue, Tom, right, as far as taking the trails out that are in the web, right? Um, well, let's continue. I mean, so this is the, 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 the raised sort of entrance on uh, Long and White, right? right? On the levee. So when he talks about the berm removal, that's what he, I'm just translating. No, that's good. This is what he's talking about in our good. terminology, okay? This is highway to hell extension, and like I say, from roughly where that little guardrail is, where that down step area is back. So you're looking at maybe like 30 seconds worth of riding back around that loop and then back out. And similarly here, that, that just that little section there. Um, okay, where's the bottom of the hill on this graph? It's, you know, the, the hill that is the existing hill is very difficult to find on that aerial. Yeah. I don't think we need to find it tonight, but you know, again, I've been talking with the trail builders about building an elevated entrance trail that may be a little, in addition to the red entrance trail, where we might be able to get you a nice high vantage point, which I, it would be beautiful for you to be able to make that ride as an entrance trail, and it could be a higher degree as far as um, expertise, but again, that's that's something that trail builders with the board and, and some of the members that are active in trail building we need to work with. But again, there's there's so many possibilities here. You know, just because we're doing restoration doesn't mean that trails and habitat restoration can't come together. Because I know all of you, that probably you know, again, I'm not going to ask for hands, but I'm sure all of you are environmentalists, and, and because who rides a bicycle? You know, it's not like you you're a motorcycle club, right? You know. So. Um, yeah, they were. They oh, were. Okay. okay, so if, what I wanted to do first was just clarify what this map is, is talking about because there, there will be some discussion. So before we go on, mm -hmm. and, and I, I, I defer to the question about the trail coming and going because you've heard from me, you've heard from the board, but it's also everyone here who rides has their own opinion on it too, so we can get there later. But does anyone have any other, does anyone need a clarification? I have yes. a question exactly. for, for Gary. Okay. In the heavily cross-hatched area out there, the one is most to the right, what's the elevation? The elevation's about 12, 12 feet. On, on the actual levee, what's, what's the elevation behind that? It's on the beach side, it's about three. And on the other side of the levee? On the water side, it's No, on the opposite side instead, on the... On yeah, the no. That's a plus three, yeah. Plus three, plus four at the beach side. So the wetland. She means a wetland. The wetland is, in some areas, you probably have a close to minus one, you know, a foot of water, um, maybe two feet. Um, we have not done any bathymetric as far as a survey for the graphic work in that area to identify how deep that is. But again, getting back to the issue of the wetlands and, and Tom's, you know, we've got to take that trail out of the wetlands. There, there's no... No, 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 I'm about what happens when you yeah, remove the levy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that, was, that, that was a follow-up question. What happens when you what remove, remove the, the levy? Are you concerned with our Oh, no, it's done, it's done very carefully. What, what it's oh, going to be Hold doing. on a second. Yeah. Okay. Is everyone clear about the specific area we're talking about? Do we need any more clarification yes. on that? Okay. One question. Okay. Yes. The yellow shaded area, not the crisscross. See how the whole thing has a big yellow shaded area? Yes. All that is what the restoration is going to take eventually? That that was within the master plan. That was area 13 that Juan talked about. Um, that, it, it, and again, what, what I'm saying to you is that we may have to morph it, change it some, to adjust it to what where the trails are now. It's very difficult for us on a map like this to geo-reference it, but again, it's something that we will work with you to minimize any impacts to existing trails, especially on the top of the grade, at the top of the hill, on the very high portions of the trail system. Is that clear? Yeah. If I can just interject something here, just for clarification purposes. This map you're looking at was a map that we discussed two years ago. As far as when the project was going, we were looking for findings. And we had meetings with then the president of the club, some of the trail builders, 
And the only thing that existed, as far as trails goes, in that whole area that we're looking at, is that blue trail. Okay. Just for point of clarification, that was roughly two years ago. And we had a discussion, and the only discussion we had at that time was, was two items. Number one, nothing could be built in Area 13. And that was up front. So we told them up front. Number two was that the blue trail was going to have to be relocated. And all that was agreed to two years ago. So the yellow trails that you see there were done after then and without approval or authorization from anybody, okay? other than the trail builders. And I understand that, you know, I don't want to name names, but there are some trail builders which are very active. They provide a, an extraordinary service. They donate their time, their effort, their sweat, equity out there, and we want to work with them. And to that end, that's why we developed Area 7, which is that other light green area, that you'll see in another slide. Maybe, can we go to that slide? So after that meeting two years ago, we said, we'll work with you to expand your mileage. No, we're going. Oh, yeah, that's that's area seven. Yeah, you're there. That's, that's it, Michelle, back. Uh, okay. No, there. That area, that area is seven. So there were a, since that meeting two years ago, that whole area, that mileage was added. And what Gary's presenting is to add additional mileage by filling in that other white area that we're talking about, which is over there on the right side of the uh, of the screen, and building some more trails and adding. So all we're, that's what we call the pit. Yeah. The pit area. So what we're saying is that we're in favor of new trails. There's just an issue as to some trails that were built erroneously, with, you know, with, with good intent, but erroneously. And as far as wet plans go, neither Gary nor I, nor anyone in the county or the city, decided, hey, this is a good place for a wetland, okay? The wetland is there, and we have to observe the regulations that are established for it in that area, and that's why that trail has to be removed from that area. Okay? I just wanted to make that just as a little bit of a clarification. Thanks. Thanks. Um, all right, take it away. I just, I just wanted the group to understand very specifically what region of the park we're talking about. Right, and Michelle, if you could go, yeah, let's go. To, I think it's important, and the reason why we wanted to reach out to you is to explain to you the phases and some timelines associated with this. Again, we have $400,000 right now in restoration dollars, and we're hopefully going to get another two hundred. dollars so we're going to have up to 600000 to beautify this, this area. I mean, this is going to be a gorgeous area. I, I don't know if you've ever been to Cape Florida, but I did. I worked with the state on doing that restoration, and that park is is gorgeous now. I mean, it, it's one of these, and it depends, you know. It, yeah, maybe you don't mountain bike in it, but people go birding in that park. People go and recreate. People go use that beach dune. Uh, you know, so it, it's it's a very popular site. So in the phasing, phase one is going to start. It's going to be very short, exotic removal within on the water side there, on the right side of that water body that we've been talking about, that wetland. And then phase two is going to be going in to remove the fill out of there to create new trails with you in the pit. Uh, then we're going to come back and then go into another phase of clearing in area 13. And then we're going to be going into a complete planting mode using community people, and we'd like to get you involved in that as well. We, we work a lot with volunteers and getting kids out to educate them, stewardship, you know the whole idea about getting people out there to work. I'm going to hold off on your question because uh, Fernando wanted me to wait to the end to do this, so at this point, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Fernando, and uh, we'll take questions later. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> joining us here today is Ron Nelson, who represents Commissioner Sarnoff's office, so he He's just going to say something, and then one for the next one. Say the last one. Thank you all. Um, I jumped up because I was a little concerned. Um, it, it's taken a little better turn, but um, we were we fought very hard to allow mountain biking out here. We, I personally hung my keister out to get this done with John Boss and Frenchy. There are commitments that were made and promises made, and trails were not to be in this area. Now, you've enjoyed riding on them for a while, but they were not to be there. 
and the, the ridge trail was always to move once they came in to restore the beach. Very simple agreement. That's, there's nothing hard about that. That is what was agreed to. And it was always known that trails would be moved around as restoration happened out there, because we, all of Virginia Key is going to be restored at some point. If you, in the one area where it shows the big Y area where the, where the fill is being deposited from the tunnel dredge digging, that's capping the brownfield that the county made many years ago when they used it as a dump. That used to be a wetland area, it used to be a lake. The county dumped it. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, a, it's a, an environmentally hazardous area. It's got a, it's being capped, it's being bent. It will be brought back. It will be preserved. It will, it will all be beautiful at some point. We're working on it piece by piece. But for, for those of you who weren't around at the very beginning, we were not in the actual negotiations to get this going. Please understand that Miami-Dade County did not want this project to happen. Miami-Dade County knew that the tunnel dredge was coming. Miami-Dade County knew that these restoration projects were coming, and they said, you guys are crazy. You're going to make a mess. This is not going to work. We'll never be able to get all these groups together. We should keep them out until it's done. We fought to get it done. We said, no. We need to get this moving. If we don't get activity out here, if we don't get life on this place, it's just not going to happen. We need the momentum. We need to keep moving. And we kept it moving. But please, I know you're very passionate about your mountain biking, but realize that all of this is for the good and was agreed to. So that's why I started to jump. So no, when, when he was saying, we'll, we'll discuss this trail, there is, that was never, it's not, the, it's not even a discussion. It was not to be there. So we're working with you to get trails in the right places and working with the environmentalists, and everyone's going to have fun out there. So thank you again. I appreciate. I hope you really do appreciate what we went through to make this happen, and appreciate the fact that we're doing a lot more to keep it going and improve it. So um, thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Thanks, Ron. Uh, Juan Fernandez. Uh, Juan is a nationalist for the city of Miami and has been working on uh, restoration projects on Virginia Key for two decades now. So, uh, thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, share with you here today. And the most important experience that I have in the working in the ecological restoration of the area of Virginia Key uh, is uh, I, I want to let you know, for example, that the I want to let you know the, the experience, the benefits that we had in Virginia Key during the ecological restoration. And I told you I have been working in the city of Miami since 1996 doing the ecological restoration in different ecosystems, Susan Park and Virginia Key. And then I remember that we began the work in 1996 in the, port, in the east portion of Virginia Key, and we found all the area full of exotic plant species, full of Australian pine, Brazilian pepper, and other exotic and invasive plant species. And then, after we begin the restoration, after we uh, continue the restoration of the area, we uh, reach an uh, excellent result uh, when we think about the biodiversity. For example, the, all the East Coast was full of Australian pine, and Australian, uh, Brazilian pepper. After we remove all those plants, all the native pine are coming back, such as, uh, for example, the CO2, that is very important for the erosion, prevent the erosion of the coastal. We have a scabola and all the species present at the two areas that is necessary for the turtle nesting in the area. So basically, on the east coast of Guinea, uh, we have in that section an uh, important value of the, of the vegetation. We have only 124 acres of this kind of ecosystem in all the United States. Here, we begun doing the restoration of 13 acres. Now, we say 32 acres of this ecosystem. Also, we have been working together with them, another uh, group, uh, environmentalist group. Um, we are assisting approximately 120 acres of the restoration of that portion of the community. In my conclusion, in my feeling, it's important that I would like to continue doing the restoration for the benefits that we have in the future 
for the biodiversity. Maybe the, the word biodiversity is so difficult to understand, but we can by you to make a good meaning since a part, or part of other areas and we give energy to explain you more what is the meaning of biodiversity. When we have biodiversity of land, we have less disease, we have less uh, problem with, uh, uh, we don't need to use fertilizer, we don't need to use a lot of water, and then that is all. But we have built uh, fish in the area. In those 70 years that we are doing the fish pressure fishing again, uh, is uh, fantastic because we save approximately 32 acres of the endangered uh, vegetation, endangered ecosystem. We save uh, endangered plant species. For example, we have three specimens of prickly ash. This is one of the endangered plant species that we have in the list in Virginia Key. And then now we have the most important population of prickly ash in the United States there in Virginia Key. Uh, as soon as we can, the uh, resort area, we will get more benefits for, for everybody. And I think if we continue this kind of work, doing the restoration, and also uh, creating areas, the public can come and enjoy the bike, bike, etc., uh, we can reach a better result. Thank you, Juan. Uh, that concludes our, our presentation of, of what will be going on in Virginia Key. Um, the, the reason why this is happening now, as we mentioned, is this, it's a funding issue, so funding is now available to proceed. So I'm going to open it up to questions, Tom and I. Um, please remember the meeting today is about the restoration and how your, how your trails um, will be affected, um, and, and nothing else. That's what we're talking about today. So um, Back me up one slide. So we'll have uh, time, about 15 minutes for questions. Um, so just make them brief and um, this will be. I spent just about every Sunday for the last three years out in the woods carrying machetes with you guys. And I know what your attention span is. So let me try and net out what I think I heard. <laughs> when we ride in today, this is where we are. That's moving 200 feet to the left, all right? So instead of coming in, making a right, and going up on a berm and riding down, it's moving to the left. And it's going to come, and it's going to reconnect down in this little corner over here where entrance to learning the fly and all that stuff is. So good, bad, right, wrong, legal, illegal, whatever, there's no way to physically put a detour trail from here to here without going through there. Period. It's physics. Right? So 200 feet to, right, or, um, 200 feet to the left, initially, the, the initial trail. About 45 seconds worth of riding here, gets a detour put through it, and then the trees get knocked down and replanted with natives. That's pretty much what it nets out, correct? Isn't the rest of that phase two that's also going to be removed in the Everything future? squared. So we'd have to move that road again? No, 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 no the road stays. Okay, so the square the thing. You're saying the, that the hash marks on the left. The second phase. Said phase two was Remaining. Please, we're going to get to questions now, so we'll, we'll address that during the question session. Please announce your name. And, uh, and All right, I'm Colin Worth. I'm the bicycle coordinator for the city of Miami. Um, we had met previously uh, about this, and I just want to make sure that we're on the same page that we were when we last met on this, that the red trail, Gary, that the red trail will be going in as the blue trail is being removed. So there will not be a delay. We won't be losing trail mileage during the construction of the blue train. No, that red, right. the red will go in first. That's correct. What, what the plan is, is we're going to clear the red trail first so that we can provide you with a trail system and, and not shut you down. Now, we're going to try to work our contractor early. Um, and I know a lot of you go out there during the evening hours. So that hopefully when you stop working at 3.30, that we'll have good clearance and there'll be no issue for you to ride that red trail. There may be times when we're chipping or something where it may be dangerous and we may have to shut down the trail in the afternoon. But we're going to try our best to create that red trail prior to building anything on the blue, taking the blue away. 
The other thing is, I just wanted to add to what Tom was saying, that red trail that we're going to build is not going to be built in wetlands. <laughs> we're going to stay high enough, we're going to have to stay high enough out of the what they call jurisdictional wetlands. And we have uh, Josh Mahoney, who works with Durham, we have Steve, Steve Blair in the back that works with Durham. We're going to have these experts with us that know regulatory and know what jurisdictional wetlands are so that we can build that trail that is not going to violate any federal, state, and local uh, regulatory issues. So I just want to make that clear. State your name. Hi, uh, my name is Stephanie Benko. I'm one of the many volunteers of the uh, Virginia Key Trail. I'm also a professional in the bicycle industry for many years. Um, what I'm not is um, a big believer in some of these um, restorations. I, I, I need to help you, Ron, and, and uh, the, the two of you help me believe because when I look at your plan up there, the first question out of my mouth is what's the elevation? Because I know I ride there a lot. And when I look at what's going on behind the current levy, it's below sea level elevation. Yes. When you take that levy down, there's no amount of um, dunes and seals is going to hold the weather. Between the type of rain that we get, the storms that we're going to get, especially this season, it's right. coming, it's going to be pretty hard for us. We're going to get hit. And the, the normal erosion process that we go through, once we take that cross hatch, the heavy cross hatch area away, we get into that wetland, the water looking thing there. And that's going to wash away. So at that point, it's going to become a moot point that we can worry about protecting an environment that the moment that we take away the levee, is going to go away. The other thing is that from my point of view, let me finish so that then you can, you can talk. From my point of view, I have witnessed the restoration process at Olivia. I witnessed the restoration process at Emilia. And from my point of view, as a regular citizen, I'm not talking about as a mountain biker, I'm not discussing that there may be trails built in a place where they don't need to be. If they are, hey, they need to go away. But my question is, I've only seen destruction every time I see this restoration process. These invasive species that we talk about, these Australian pines, they're 60 feet tall. They've been there since basically the dredge has been put in there. So they're not invasive, they're native to this. The fact that we're going back there and we're saying, oh, they're invasive, we take them away. I have issues with that. I have issues because from a citizen point of view, it's my taxpayer's money. I, I look at this and I'm like, it doesn't make sense to me that we spend all of this money in taking down the vegetation that's currently is working, because clearly nothing is washing away. We have a lot more shoreline that we can use to work with uh -huh. for turtle habitats, for CO2 restoration, more mangrove and everything. And my, my personal experience has been that every time I see restoration, I see destruction without reparation. And it's not only a question of my lifetime, it's a question, and in my opinion, when you take it away, the kind of erosion that we're gonna get in the in-between time that it takes from the invasives to be removed and the natives to be put away, we're not gonna have the land there. It's gonna be taken away. So, make me believe, because right now, I really have a hard time. Regardless of where the trails are built, I just have a hard time seeing the restoration. This project for restoration, this has been an ongoing project now for many years. There's different phases. We just completed one particular portion away from the North Point, and we're working with the Army Corps of Engineers. It's a totally different topic as far as restoration, the invasives and the natives. What we're here today to discuss is how this particular project is going to affect the trails and what we're doing to work with you to expand the trails and to mediate the issues that we're having as far as the locations of some of the trails, and that's the discussion that we're really going to concentrate on. I'll be more than happy to take your name and number, and then when we have another meeting, as we discuss further the actual work as far as the restoration project goes and the details of those, we can have a meeting just to discuss that, because that in itself will take another whole meeting, just that particular discussion, okay? I don't want to, you know, skirt your question or your concern, because you're legitimate, but just to explain and give you the details of that, 
will probably take a whole different um, <coughs> Yeah, I, I, would love, I, I would love to take you out to, to our restaurant. I've, no, been doing, just be her. I've been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> we're we're going to be meeting here at 930 on Monday, and, and I'd be happy if, if you're available. If not, I'll, I'll schedule with you, get a card from you. I, I've done like 50 restoration projects throughout the county, and I'd love to take you to show you these jewels. I mean, and, and so please keep an open mind. Restoration does work. Um, it provides... Like Juan was talking about biodiversity, it's just amazing. So anyway, the, the thing about the engineering that you were talking about, as far as your concern about the wetlands, we, we have done these before where we have isolated wetlands in those areas. Yes, storms impact. Look, look at Sandy and what it did to New Jersey. I mean, concrete structures, look what tornadoes do. Uh, yes, of course storms are going to impact. We're never going to build anything that's going to up, you know stand up to a storm. But we will be able to provide it, and this is probably that got lost in the conversation. We're not just going to be building a flat dune. The dune is going to have relief, uh, relief meaning that it's going to have some shape to it. It's going to come up and stay up for about 30, 50 feet, and then it's going to come back down and then meet with the water. So you're going to have a, a little hump, if you will, that's going to serpentine down that shoreline. With sea oats, and as you know, on Miami Beach, what do we have? We have dunes on Miami Beach. Why did they build dunes? That was man made, the dune that we have on Miami Beach. Why was that put in? To protect the shoreline. Dunes are shoreline stabilizers. So, yes, a big storm when a cat fire comes through, for sure, that area is going to look different afterwards. So are our homes. So, uh, you know, we can't look at that extreme, but we can look in the short term as far as the habitat that's going to be there, that's going to be used by the animals when we're not riding bikes in the area at night, when the turtles come in to nest. So I would love to take you, I'll meet with you after, and I would like to help you see my vision and my perspective. I understand what you're saying, and, you know, and a lot of people take shots at different people because they're spending tax dollars on restoration, but I think there is a, a happy story to tell you. My name is Tyrone. My question is concerning your definition of clearing between the different phases. Um, is the definition of clearing being bulldozers clearing everything out, planting all new, or is it going to be selective felling of invasive trees and plants? And is it different between each of the phases? Yeah, the, the, and again, um, there's, there's going to be some discussions after this meeting. Um, I think Tom and some of the board members in the city of Miami to talk about the trails that are within Area 13 um, as, as far as how we deal with that. But to answer your question specifically, there we have pretty much a monoculture. A monoculture meaning it's uniform casuarinas. We always do selective clearing. If we have a desirable native tree within that area, we try to preserve that because there's no reason for us to take down a native tree that's within our restoration area because that's what we're trying to put back. So uh, selective clearing, we call it, is what we do as far as trying to work around the natives. In this area, there's it's predominantly the Brazilian pepper, which is an exotic, and the Australian pine, which is another exotic. Very few natives, but when we do, what we do is we try to go out with our biologists to tag the desirable native vegetation in the area, and then we work around it. So does that answer your question? Yeah, I was trying to get to the point of, we, we have these unauthorized trails in here, and if, if you're not going to be going through them completely bulldozed, and we may be able to preserve some of that trail, we're not talking about hundreds of hours of the So without, you know, if you're not going to just go in and bulldoze and just select yeah, we, we, we are willing to look at it as how it ties in. Those trails, I guess, to the left of the red line, we are willing to look at it and see if it fits and works within the parameters of the project. And also, what is the cost involved to work around those trails and incorporate those trails? So I can't give you a definitive yes today, but we are willing tonight to obviously look at those and see if they can work within the current plan as it is. Excuse me, Gary. Can I pull it yes, off for a second? Sure. Uh, just some clarification. Same thing as Tom was doing, so we can see how this map. Uh, I'm thinking you for it. No. <laughs> you got to know you let know. Um, we've had a few meetings already, and, and we take copious notes. So there have been many things that have pretty much been agreed uh, by verbally that have kind of changed at this meeting so far. 
we were told already that basically we were trying to save this part of the highway to hell extension. So as Tom was trying to say, where the red line is, where the new fire road will go, all this can't be saved because the road has to go over it. So that's fine. Gary told us after we were out here walking in this area that because of all the work that has gone into this area, the trail, especially because there are some structures there that took a lot of time, especially moving rock and things like that, that he would work to save this and then clear the rest of the area around it. And just some clarification, if right here you'll see this is the fire road that runs down and here are the containers. This is Highway to Hell and then it meets up here. Fire um, Freebird comes in here and then if you're on Freebird, if you look off to your left sometimes there's a ridge that drops off. So where this yellow line stops, that's that ridge. So that's where you're seeing, it's not on this map, there was another map that we drew up that had it, but you can see where our trails are and where things are supposed to get done. So hopefully, as Ty's saying, we should be able to save this while allowing all the restoration of all this area around there. I think, I think we're all on the same page with that, except the only, the only difference is that we're willing to look at it and we want to try to incorporate it, and that's our intent, Let's see if we can save that portion. However, we can't give you a definitive yes and say, you know, it's a promise, it's well, a yes, until the whole thing is evaluated. There was a verbal yes. Well, our understanding was that this is the, the thing is we haven't been able to get anything in writing, no, so... Well, <laughs> I've been with I've been with the city for 28 I've been with the city for 28 years, and I can tell you that I don't think anybody's come to me that says that you've said something as a yes, and then changed. Well, it. no, you weren't there, so no, I, I, I completely disagree. The, the, the agreement was the activity we have done over the last what six I'm weeks saying, were based yeah. on an agreement, but you know things happen. But you know. No, what I'm saying what I'm saying to you is today is that it's the intent that we want to save that area. We know you guys have put in a lot of effort into it. You know, get a lot of volunteer hours. I'm not saying that it will not be safe. What I'm just saying is that before I can commit and say yes, we have to do a total evaluation of it and come up with a conclusion that it can. It can be incorporated, you know, and into the project within the scope of the project. And at that point in time, if it's a yes, then we will give you the yes. I just want to make that clear here. I don't want people walking away from here saying, hey, get out of the we're going to save this area. That's well, that's, that's also the, 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 you know, the, I mean, red, the red line fire road was a negotiation where the restoration wanted the new fire road to go is on the edge of Freebird, which is on the far edge of the yellow blob. And we gave many reasons why that doesn't make much sense, how it would damage of what, what area we do have available. And basically we also said it just makes sense for the actual restoration and possible future of reopening this beach to have the fire road next to that wetland because there's a it's not part of the, the plan but there's a dream that one day there would be catwalks going over that wetland to access the beach we're like well if you're going to make catwalks maybe one day might as well have a fire road that leads to it gives you access to that whole area so we negotiated and gary graciously said you know what it makes sense we'll move that fire road next to the wetlands so there has been a lot of push and pull. There has, you know, we're, it's, 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 we're it's, all it's, trying to work on it absolutely. together. Absolutely. I'm just trying to stabilize that things that we agree with, <laughs> we come together and we talk and we agree about it, and then suddenly we come here and other things are being said. Okay, okay, let me, let me, the other, wait, wait, wait. Let me say one thing, Joe. The, the reason why that's happening is that we received this map about a week or two ago, right? Okay. And, and the property owner, Juan Pascual, Park and Rec, is the authority for the site. You know, what we're trying to do now is to work as a team. And, and like Juan is saying that he just, you know, if he wants to be no, able to, I know. I know. He wants it's to just... be able to talk to Commissioner Sarnoff, to, to Ron Nelson. I agree. The thing is, is we have around. meetings and you're not always able to come well, to the meetings, but, so sometimes we think we have decisions made. I, I think I can go and take a pretty hard line with you, just to make sure we get some things clear. Um, and while you're talking about agreements that were made, I made it very specific that agreements were made that there would be no trails in this area at the beginning. So if you want to talk about agreements that were made and not kept, we can go back to the very beginning. Well, Wait, no, 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 you spoke a lot. Let me speak. <laughs> well, actually, I got cut off. So I was yeah. actually going to bring up a point of what you said earlier. So, so wait, wait, working your wait, wait, best since I got cut off. Yeah. Hold on. Since I got cut off, something that you said earlier bothered me incredibly because since day one, when we were told we can do the trails and everything like that, we were told 
you will not be bothered on the portion of the master plan that's for mountain bikes about restoration. Your trees are your trees. We're never going to take your trees. The first thing you said when you came up here is, all of North Point will be restored one day. We, wait, wait, we, I can probably speak for Tom, myself, every volunteer in here, especially Frenchie who is not here, that we would have never taken on this task if that was ever said. So because, guess what, we're all here because of what happened at Alita. Yes. And portions of that were that effective. So hearing now that, oh yeah, there's plan to restore everything, which basically means tear down. We've been telling everybody in this room, because that's what we've been told, don't worry about the trees. And we've been telling, look, yes, as per master plan, that is their section of land. They have right to it. And it, we're all we're all here because it affects us in some ways. We I, just want to. I appreciate your. And we have seen the previous I, restoration. I, I, I appreciate your emotion, and, and we're being repetitive. But I, I want to make sure this clear. Okay, I, I may have misspoke. Okay, maybe not every inch of Virginia Key will be restored. Virginia Key is being restored. When I, when I spoke of that, I meant mostly where the where the brownfield is completely being restored. A whole huge area of that of that queue you don't see that it's unusable at this point. You're not allowed there. Can't be there. <coughs> Where the WQIM radio tower is, that will be restored. Do I know that, that there are plans to restore every Australian pine in that section? I was at those negotiations. I'm the guy who held those negotiations. So please, please understand, I was there for every bit of it. And I was there with Frenchie and John Boss and, and Max Cycles. And so I was there. And I was there with the county. I'm the guy who went to the county and fought with the mayor at that time. And with the commissioner, Jimenez, who was not the mayor to make this happen, because they said, no, don't do it, all right? So I understand that. I'm not your enemy here, but we had some agreements that I have to make sure are kept. Now, this, now I speak with Juan and Gary, and they said, we can probably keep some of these trades. Even though they weren't supposed to be there, we can probably keep some. So that's fine. We're not having that problem. I just want to make sure that we're, you understand, we're all here working together. There were some agreements made. You know it as well as I do. And some trails went into areas where they were not supposed to go. So we're all fine. There's no disagreement here about that. Um, that. That large ridge was always going to be removed from the very beginning. Always. That large ridge where the blue line is was always going to be removed. So we're not, we're not talking about something that, that wasn't ever public. And I'm in total agreement. I'm going to do everything I can to help keep this mountain biking going, as I said in my, in my discussion. Um, we're here together to make this work. We absolutely are. But, you know, and, and there is some negotiating, as you said. We have moved the red line a little bit here and there. That's, that's fine. We're all here, and that proves that we're willing to make this work. So don't, let's not take each other out of the picture. Right? I don't think anybody's here to do no, that. No, that's not We're trying to hold back and find the contest. You know, we're we're not trying to budge back. Let me make a, a request to the project folks. There's a number of people in the room here who changed their plans for tonight. Some got out of work early, so people want to be heard. And I, I think it's important that people have a chance to be heard. And so I think everyone understands the scope of, of this project and what the changes will be for our particular riding experience. Is, is that accurate? No one needs any clarification on what's happening per se. I'd like to know more about the vehicles that are going to be used, okay, and so machinery and such, where that's going to be parked, and how that will impact our parking and our entrance to the trails and the events that we have that yeah. support okay. the So the I think the, the process was that people are stepping up to the mic, saying their name, you know, and asking a question. So we got the question. What's your name? Seth. Seth. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, is there going to be big machinery sitting around? You know, a lot of kids go out there. Is that going to, how's that going to impact us? Basically, what's going to happen is, can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, basically, <laughs> phase one. Phase one is going to be clearing. It's going to be one piece of equipment. It's going to have a mulching head on it. It's going to be, like I was saying before, we're going to have to keep clearance as far as, you know, because it spits out chips of wood, and we don't want any issues as far as safety. So when there's going to be somebody there monitoring that piece of equipment and assisting with safety issues, so... When that piece of equipment is working in areas where it may shoot a mulch chip over into the red trail, we will then have to shut down the trail. That, that shuts down the whole park. But, but, but I, I think there's other opportunities. When, when one says it shuts down the whole park, 
will work with you to those those moments are going to be far and few between because we're going to be working the majority of the time Monday through Friday in periods that people are not going to be using the trail in the afternoons we're going to be stopping early at three o'clock so that you have that afternoon drive on the red trail so you know and again the period of that phase one is going to be very short the contractor told me you could do it in 30 days again i extend that to 60 because you can all, always believe what a contractor does you know? so, yeah, so, so, but whatever if it's, if it's 90 days we're just going to use the same game plan so it's, it's going to work it's going to be fine it's just a matter of kind of to to work and adjust as we go through the process that's all questions I have a couple of comments and then a question. Uh, first of all, I think that I speak for all the mountain bikers that came out today that we're not here to fight you guys. We're here to show our presence and let you know that we care and that we want to work with you. We're not fighting the changes. We just want to make sure that it makes sense, it makes sense and that it, it, it doesn't take away from a lot anyway from our experience. As I'm a medical professional, and as such, we know that in our country, obesity is a big problem. And we're all out there with our kids and our families trying to be active. This is a beautiful thing that the volunteers have done. They've put countless hours of blood, sweat, and tears. And we want to keep building and keep growing up. My question is, from a medical standpoint, the safety of riders during the process of restoration as far as emergency personnel being able to get back to the trails to treat people that may have been injured, um, <coughs> about safety, you know, things of that nature, you could speak to that um, while the restoration is going yeah. on, the, the work of the road and such. We'll do the same thing when we originally set up the trails. We're going to have the fire department out. We're going to have fire rescue out with us to kind of talk about how we're going to work through the restoration and how we're going to have alternative emergency access corridors. So it, it's something, you know, it, it's something that we all work as a team with the professionals that are needed. And, and if we have safety issues, then we're going to deal with the fire rescue. Because, you know, when, when I remember the first day of walking the site with the fire rescue people as far as how we were going to get them in to the trail system. And we can do this. This is not a complicated thing. I mean, you know, again, remember what the site was before you started to use it and what it is today. And what it will be in the future will be better than what it is today. So, hey, hopefully that answers. Parasol, I just want to say that, uh, first of all, you said it well. You know, that this is an effort that's for everybody. Uh, obviously, there's a large group here that's very interested, and we're very interested in what you have to say. And we don't want to have any adverse impact on any of the activity. What we want to do is we want to enhance your experience and that of your children. And maybe if you don't have any yet, but you will someday, grandchildren, <coughs> to be able to come out here and enjoy this and what our responsibility is is just to how we can compromise and come up with a plan that will enhance the facility, provide the amenities for the enjoyment of everybody for generations to come. That's all we're here for. And we need your help. And, and this, these trails would not be there today if it wasn't for the efforts, uh, the great efforts of a few, but the sweat equity of many that have been out there. So we're all working together. We're on the team. And we're not taking this as, you know, the trail against... The restoration. This is one unit, one project that we need to work together in order to get success. So I want to thank you for your comments because they're very well done. Hi, I'm Kelly. Um, so I think this is more maybe a curious question. I work in environmental crimes, and so I'm just curious about. The, I always. Uh, you, you're going to arrest me now because we went to the West. Yes, I'm going to go back to my job and arrest all of you. So, we're going to be moving all of the blue side to the red side. So, I want I was curious to know why would the um, highways of hell be possibly not be saved if only a chunk of it is on the wetlands? I was just more curious. Is it because we're moving trees onto that property? Or is it because it might just not work out? I think what we're talking about is, and what we were talking previously, is the chunk that is in the wetlands and affected area and inside towards the blue line. That's the area that definitely needs to be yeah. eliminated. The other area we're working on trying to see how we can incorporate that and make it work and, 
and tie it into the existing trails and tie it into the new red trail. So we'll be working on trying to make that happen. We just can't commit to that right now, like I said previously. Before. That's our intent is to look at it and see if we can make that happen. Okay, and then I have one more question. I'm curious. But the red trail, since the wetland is obviously not that pinpoint perfect you know, line, since it's so close, it, it looks close to me. Will there be possibility because of the restoration? Off and off. At the same time, I'm not one of those. I'm sadly not one of the volunteers that pick up the shovels and understand like the dirt and the trees and how they work. Um, so I'm just curious because it's so close to the wetland, I can't completely understand the environment. Maybe it changes. Will there be a possibility that in a year later, because of the restoration, that red road won't be in a proper spot and we'll have to move it again? I think in the design phase, and again, we've been working with Joe and Frenchie to lay out the trail. Originally, that red trail was going to be on the left-hand side of the yellow area there. That, that's where it was originally. There, there was a lot of concern from the trail builders about it being that far to the west. So that's where we came to a conclusion that, okay, let's see if we can make this work as close as we can to the water. Now, keep in mind, you know, I don't like straight things, so I would like to kind of serpentine it, and I know for your experience, you would probably like it a little bit more shape to it, too. This red trail is not only going to be an entrance trail for the mountain bike community, but also it's going to be an entrance way for kids, strollers, walking trail people. That's not good. No, that's not good. It's in the master plan. Wait, wait, wait. In the okay. master plan. Who made these master plans? The extra dollar wait, 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 excuse me. The, the red trail originally was They're going to area. be, the red trail was in the master plan was a multi-use trail, okay? Now, what we're doing now is morphing it a little bit, and we're trying to kind of come to some agreement as far as having mountain biking, but I think, Joe, you understood when we laid that out that it was something that you felt would be comparable and oh, no, yeah. acceptable. Well, right, right now, now like, he, he, he double track, not single track. track. Right. No, and it needs to be that road. way because that's what we're taking out. And in any way, yeah, that a, part of the Blue Trail road. is an integral part of where <coughs> all our recreation individuals, the ones who really don't do the type of riding we do, they come with the skinny tires, sometimes without a helmet. Yeah. They come with the strollers, to towing the strollers with the bicycle, or pushing okay. the strollers okay. around and running around. We have, a, we have a healthy community of trail runners that come and use Perfect. that whole Well, that, that's what I'm going to say. And the blue, that's, and the blue, that's, no, that's, no, but you're taking the trail the you meant more like right running now, strollers and yeah. things, like, things that people will yeah. know when they get the on dirt right now, <laughs> that a traditional really may not work yeah, on so, the dirt. So the red trail will work. It's not going to become a concrete it's path. Really it's not going to be, you know, there's no money for that. So it's going to become what the blue currently is. It's just going to move over and it's going to become that red. <laughs> I got a good limit passing on there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Andrew. Uh, quick question. Uh, not all funding is in place yet, correct? Four hundred thousand is. Okay, so, but that's not all, of it, correct? Oh, or? It's it's as much as we need. What's okay. the projected final? Well, we're asked we're looking for another two hundred, but if we don't get it, we're still going to be able to do the right. <coughs> so, so without the full amount, everything. Right. The only there won't thing, be like, oh, we're going to start and then stop. We don't have any more money. Or, yeah. You. Be positive. I am being honest. <laughs> I'm not being blind. Look, so. let, let, how about we quantify the question? There's multiple phases, yeah. right? Are all the phases funded? Yes. Okay. Why would you need two hundred thousand dollars more then? This is a tough crowd. Okay, okay that, that's a very easy answer to that question because there is an endangered species. It's called a loggerhead sea turtle that nests on this beach. How many nests last year? That doesn't matter. Yes, it does. No, 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 no. If there's one nest nesting there, that's enough. It's an endangered species. Okay. okay. But what does it have to do with the, with the question that I asked about? Why does he need two hundred thousand dollars more if you're fully Because funded? there's an endangered species that's in peril, that's nesting on the species yeah. in very low numbers that used to nest in very high numbers. Yeah. And we're we're storing this beach and improving the quality of this beach because it's under serious threat from sea level rise. The beach is too inclined. So the idea is to flatten the beach and lengthen it. It's an endangered species. I know, sir, but you did not answer my question. Next. One second, one second. So you're up next. Hold on a second. There. Andy's question, and forgive me if I'm reading your mind and I read it wrong. What I think you were really asking 
is 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 the intent that the, from day one of the project from start it gets finished and is there funding to do that? That's really what you were asking. Right? Yeah. And okay. maintenance. No, I don't know that we got well, that. Well, you know, and one thing I want to bring up is, and other people have brought this up in the team, is that if the trails are allowed to stay in the center there, it's going to be more expensive for us to do the restoration. So, but I think you know what I'm hearing is that we're willing to work with you uh, to see if we can kind of balance this whole thing out and make compromises and to get it done. So why do we need two hundred thousand dollars more? Yes. Fernando is a internationally known turtle expert. You didn't know that, but he works. The question with turtles. was: If you are fully funded to do all the phases of this project, okay. I can and not that. only that, Did you let me answer that. Wait. Yeah, okay. Because I couldn't finish my question. I understand. We did not interrupt any of you guys when you were talking, right. and all of you guys have interrupted every speaker that I've Okay. So this is my question. I am very concerned about all the restoration projects that the city is doing. I saw what they did in Olita, don't interrupt me. I saw what they did at Cape Florida Park, which you find beautiful, and I don't. I go there all the time. I've been a resident of QBSK all my life, and now I'm with them. So, because of the experience that I've had in the Rickenbacker Causeway, in Olita, in um, Cape Florida, and in other areas of Miami, that the job is started, perhaps with good intentions, Not and much. with a little bit of money. But I don't think that enough studies are being done, and the worst part, is that when you destroy everything, when you go to replant, and let's say that you actually replant, and you wait for 20 years for the trees to grow, there's no money left for maintenance. So the trees start to die. In fact, I just talked to him on the phone a few months ago about this issue, and he told me, the, the biologist for VK, okay. he told me that the problem, because I'm a nature lover and I'm also a mountain biker, I'm concerned about the trails, but I'm more concerned about <coughs> this plan not being really well thought. So, my question is, if you have fully funded, do you have funds to maintain what you plant? Or are you going to let nature take its course afterwards, and then we're going to see all the plants dying again, and have just barren plants? Yes. Um, when, we, when we put together these packages, when we put the restoration projects together, we start to go through a phasing process. Sometimes, like Cape Florida, for instance, that you don't like, but other people do. Um, everybody gets to, you know, I'm like talking about the like. nature parts of, of Cape Florida, which I, I walk all the time. It's okay. I'm not arguing with you. Um, we, we go through phases. Cape Florida went through six years of restoration. We had seven different funding sources. We had seven different phases of restoration for that project because the total cost of that project was almost six million dollars. We didn't have all that money in one bag of money, so we had to go out and do it in pieces. As far as why do we need $200,000, I think it's a very good question. And I think it's very if you good that you fine. brought up that point about maintenance. Maintenance is going to be an issue mm -hmm. at this site and other sites on Virginia Key. I mean, all of our restoration sites need maintenance. We have a division within Miami-Dade County that does nothing else but goes out and does maintenance on natural areas. So yes, it, it's something that we Are have worked. For maintenance, yes. Post. Yes. How much do you have for maintenance for how many years? I would love to work through the budget with you. Um, we have all, enough. All that to take information should be public if it's a, That goes to my next question. I would like to have a I mean, copy of the master plan, so including can, all the environmental studies. All the can I get a copy of that? Right. Next question, please. Yeah. I, I, I cannot get a copy of that. Actually, I do. I want for you for this part of this meeting to come. What is Next the, question. The question yeah. I have for you for the turtles, you know, I, oh, I'll try this. in the environmental uh, studies, and I want okay, to take master plan, plan, I can get you, no problem. Okay. As far as the scope of work and the budget, I'll be happy to give it to you. Hey, I'm Robert 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 City of Miami. Um, I'm hearing a lot of people saying they don't like the restoration work, including the lady who's in another conversation. They don't like the restoration work, the restorations that you have seen so far. There's a restoration at Virginia Key done by Juan Hernandez. Gary has helped. That's absolutely gorgeous. It's a hammock. There's canopy. There's shade. There's three ecosystems. I'm hearing Gary say that you would like your vision to be seen by these people. And I'm hearing Juan say that we can invite you to see the restoration that's already taking place at Virginia Key. So that's what I'm here to say. Um, I do community outreach, so I'm willing if you all, are you 
Mary I'll take the wanted to do that, We'd love to set a date for that for sure. Set some time apart and go to the restored part of Virginia Key and see what's there and see what a gorgeous shady restoration is. Yeah. So, without, honestly, we'll our experience that. has been, has been we'll work work with a restoration good. that Juan has been doing for all these years, and I know that Juan has been hard, working really hard on it, yes, with average. very little budget. Is this the type of restoration that you are planning for? Yes. Juan, yes. Juan is part of the restoration team. Right. So if you would like to come and see what's already there, we can set up a tour and we can spend the morning doing that, and you can see what you have to look forward to. Yeah. Is anybody interested in that? I am. Yeah. Yeah. And can I just? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll work it. I just asked Tom about it, and we'll work it. The dates and everything. Perfect. We'll just work it through Tom. Thank you. And we'll Thank you. Great. Right. Right. And then you. <coughs> you would just contact Tom about it. So my question about the turtles, you know, because you bring up a good point, you know, we do have species that we share the environment with, and uh, they're really under attack by a lot of environmental issues. So the, the, the two questions, is a two-pronged question for me. One is that uh, the workers still around around this area, they're pretty badly polluted at this point. We see a lot of oil sticks coming in from the port. Um, we see a lot of trash washing out. We do have the water, uh, the sewer uh, treatment stuff that gets there and then comes back. So, um, is that possible a little bit that the, the turtle situation may be affected by that? And the second uh, question is because as we turn the corner there, on the on basically on the uh, right hand corner of, of the picture, we have all the other area there that has not been developed. There's a lot of beach and everything. Um, why also are we not looking in that direction also to help the turtles together with habitat restoration? Um, addressing the two questions. One is the sewer issue. What we're seeing here is a nesting situation. So these are just turtles that are coming to nest. Sea turtles nest once, maybe twice a year, just the females. Um, and they're known to nest in a lot of different situations. I don't think the sewer would be affecting them because they live out in the ocean. They're just coming to this beach maybe one day, a year or two. Um, regarding the other beach, that's up for consideration. This is restoration is usually done in peace deal. When you have the funding, you, you work in those areas. So we can look at those areas. We'll talk with Wendy Tees, who's a does the sea turtle work on Virginia Key, and see if that's that's an option for later. Um, I'll just throw out that sea turtles exhibit what's called site fidelity. So they only nest in the same beach where they were born. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I'm going back to even if there was one turtle nesting there, if we lose that one turtle, it's gone forever. It's done. That population is gone forever. So, what times of, what times of year do they nest? Sorry? When throughout the year do they nest? Summer, May to October. When is this project going to take place? <laughs> 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 so, so said, oh, hold on, no, I mean, you just got, no, no, fast, but you just stuff on We walked through all of this with Noah and the, the agency so that's authorized to this beach. Right in the middle of the next day. Well, we're starting as away from the beach. The beach is a whole yeah. different situation. Is there not a risk that this project. work will impact the next day? I can answer that. No, we're, we're not working on the beach during turtle season. So we're going to be working away from it. As you know, that elevated burn is not on the beach. It's 10 feet away, though. No, no, not 10 feet. Uh, no, it's, yeah. no, no, it, it's, 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 it's not within the turtle nesting area, so it's not going to end. I want to see the environment. So just, just, a, just a quick, uh, just a little follow-up. Just uh, I was just there this past weekend, right? That beach is, is literally, very littered. Uh, oh, yeah. So is there anything that can be done in the process again? Maintenance to, to, turtle, yeah. to turtle health? Yeah, we have a program that we're going to implement. Uh, again, you know the city is really strapped for money right now. What we're going to do is set up. Apparently not. Yeah. 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 No, no. The, the money is not coming from the city of Miami. All of the money that we got, and again, I'm going to go back through the funding sources. We got approximately $350,000 through a settlement, a, a litigation fund. It was a settlement that we got. No? No? No. No. It was the dredging, the Port of Miami dredging on shore. Anyway, 350 came from there, and then Fernando and I wrote for a grant to the federal government. No, no, no. For, it's for, for, for 50,000. Oh. 
Oh, oh, well, come on. So, no, let me ask you a Given that we're talking oh, about you know, world 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 that's, that's world government. Oh, 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 I, mean, oh, I want to make sure we address the fight. Keep it in the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I just right. feel I owe that to you guys. I kept us on track. I mean, Wells Fargo Come on, God. I think, again, most of the community knows if we don't have a certain amount of miles, then the people just are going to stop coming because mm -hmm. it's just not worthwhile to come out. You know, some of them come from north, some of them come from the south, and if you're going to have like less than six miles, a lot of, and, and part of those six miles are that dinner Mary that you gave us, which is really nice, but I can tell you a lot of people skip that, and it's really hot because there's not a lot of shade there. I know there's some growing, there's some native plants growing, but again, I know a lot of people that will say, you know, we're just mm -hmm. going, especially with kids. Kids, it's it's a pretty long group. It's great exercise group, but you know, again, it's it's not in the shape, which is one of the reasons we want to keep them. The other reason I like to keep those trees is because I live on Brickle. Those trees block a lot of stuff in the storms. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least Jimbo's not there to send more stuff over to me when I'm in storms, but <laughs> at the same time. And the other thing I'd like to know is, as far as the master plan, I mean, I love the area, the idea of the public. Actually, I don't love the idea of the public. Because if we're going to get the people that are over on Virginia Key now coming to our beach, dirty beach, it's not going to be a good beach, and it's not going to be a healthy for kids. No. And the other thing is, if we can turtle. continue to keep having talks with the master plan, I'm sure it must be possible yeah. because yeah. I also see where they only have, excuse me, 100 parking spaces designated in that master plan, and already we can get much more than that. And we know we're living in with everything else. I just want to make sure that, that when changes are happening to the master plan that we kind of get kept in the loop because I don't think that's that's not even enough for a triathlon event. You know, Max is going to have it in 100 parking spaces. is just not going to be sufficient. So I think just to keep an idea, if we keep informed about what's happening and changes in the overall thing, not just not just for the trails. Good afternoon, my name is Fernando Osa, and this is my son, Nicolas. Good afternoon. And basically, Nana, I just want to say on the, on the other side of the coin, uh, of all this that's going on today, thanks to John and everybody that volunteered. We put very little time in helping, but we have done just a little bit, probably 1% or 1%. We're very grateful to all of you. To the gentlemen here, to everyone that make these trails happen, to Max Cycle, and everybody who wastes money and spend all the time to do this for us. We, I just want to say thank you. This is great. We are all for the restoration, and whatever we are going to lose, I'm quite sure we'll gain some other way. But that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Anything else? We have a start date again. We asked that a few times. June first. June first. I mean tomorrow. In two days. That's uh, uh, supposed to be start date. So. Uh, my name is Jason Bacon, and I'd like to say uh, I used to work with Gary and Steve, and uh, these guys are very competent. Uh, you have nothing to worry about. They do keep uh, the public used to mind, and I, I know that the leader was a, was the bopper, but I think we've all grown from that, and we've cut back the rising team. And it's public discussion. I think that goes a long way. And uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to a great, uh, a great uh, project. And if you need any help, you know, let me know. Happy to be here and help you out. Um, and the, uh, the other thing I had a question about is, what are you guys going to do? Uh, what's the plan for the pit area as you're taking dirt from over here? Is there a plan for uh, the pit area, some kind of a master plan to, to build some features and, and do that and utilize, you know, you guys all that material? Thank you so much for asking that question. I really appreciate it. I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> Nothing has happened in the pit, uh, basically because we've been working for a while uh, with the pit. Um, we were expecting, remember when the park was just opening, the tunnel dirt was going into the pit. Uh -huh. An accident happened uh, from one of the contractors working on that, and he destroyed some mangroves, and the project completely stopped. Uh, from that point on, we were always expecting the pit to be basically a mini mountain. 
A lot of dirt was, they didn't have a place to put it. The project south of the sewage plant hadn't started yet. So they were gonna give us a bunch of dirt there. We're expecting a mountain to give us elevation, to give us better trails that go up and down. Uh, when that happened, and that accident happened, and that stalled, we were basically just told to wait. We're like, okay, wait, 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 you know, you'll get your dirt, you'll get your dirt, you'll get your dirt. Tunnel dirt started coming in again, then the whole thing about testing the dirt came up, so that delayed it even more. Then they decided to start filling the area south of the sewage plant. When we saw that, we're like, okay, can you just divert maybe 10, 20, 30 trucks a day, our direction, fill our pit like we were expecting, we basically haven't touched it because of that. To this day, there's now about 20 extra feet on that area south of the sewage plant, and the pit sits barren and empty. Uh, this dirt that comes from this, the levee, basically, as everybody's calling it, our current fire road, really won't make a dent. The dirt, if you guys have been in there lately, you'll see a bunch of new piles. Those new piles are probably more than that levee would do. And as you can see, that's not much to fill that area or do anything. If one day we find out we're never going to get anything in there, we can start building trails, we can start working with putting in uh, natives and things like that with these groups. We did have a, me a meeting a while back, Colin was there, we've been trying to work with Colin on this, to get us the dirt, build us our little mountain, and then we called and actually asked Gary, if we can get dirt up there, it's going to be elevated, we're going to need trees, we're going to need natives, we want if we're going to do something new, we want natives. We want to you know, bring the, the spirit of Florida back to the park. So if we can get that fill and get that area done, we can start working on new trails. And I think Frenchie's excited if, that if we get our dirt in there the way that we've been told, we could probably fit another two miles in there. And, and it's elevation, up and down with trails down, something you won't see unless you go up to Tallahassee or north of that. So we're just waiting on that dirt. And there are still trucks coming in every day and they're not coming to the park. So we're trying to work to get that dirt over to us and get that project up and going again. So that's the plan with that. So Joe, just to kind of follow through with that thought, you could use the fill that we're going to be excavating, right? We could. Okay. There, there are other, we still need to negotiate on that. We, I, think I, I, I think I've told you what I would, where I would rather see that dirt go, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we have ideas we need to talk, so there are a lot, there's a lot of negotiations that still need to go on, but we needed to get this done because apparently there's a start of June something first and to start to clearing Just stuff. to let you know, too, what we're going to do as far as the follow-up from this, I'm going to set up a meeting with Tom, Juan, and whoever else on the board that wants to meet with Juan to follow through with this process as far as authorization and next steps. Um, and we can talk about the fill that's going to be coming from Project that does that sound good to you guys? Of course. Mm -hmm. There's a couple more people with questions. Yeah, if I could. Just to clarify, to clarify no, it's the start date is not the June 1st. No, it's not. No, no, this one's for the Let's. We've got to wrap up uh, for the night, so these will be the last two questions, unless there's something really super <coughs> pending that you need to go through. Hi, my name is Yvette. Uh, my question is, uh, although disappointed about some of the restoration affecting the trails, my question is, this public beach area, will it be open to the public soon? And is there any possibility of positioning that? I mean, with all the beaches living in South Florida, public access, I mean, that would hurt, I think, the native species along with the turtles and everything mm -hmm. else. I think leaving that area untouched it would be much better. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Of course. Absolutely. I mean, it's just just my question. If living with all these beaches, why would you want to access people accessing areas where you know we live in South Florida, a melting pot where people don't care, they don't respect anything anyway? You don't think they're gonna disrupt any of the species there? I guess, plenty of other beaches for them to go. You know, I, you know, I understand your point, and, and if we could set off areas that we restored and not have public access to them, I mean, you know, as a sanctuary area, I mean, that would be ideal. But I, I think there's a real desire in the community, and, and if you look the, the number of people that use our beaches here in South Florida, you'll see that every one of them is used, used up. And more beaches that we can provide is the better. Now, as far as impacting the species, and the turtles. We, the turtles come in at night and then 
what they do is they have a monitoring team that comes out early in the morning to identify where the nests are, and sometimes they even transplant the eggs to a nursery. Um, but so I just want you to understand that there's a lot of thought and management that goes into the turtle nesting habitat. Uh, but as far as the sea oats and things like that, we've never had problems with people. We just did a restoration that Juan talked about on Virginia Key where we planted almost 25,000 plants and we haven't had one pulled out of the ground. So I, I don't think there's really any vandalism as far as plant material goes. Yes, people using beaches creates trash and that's something that we're going to try to try to get community forces together to take the load off the city as far as them having to budget more money for cleaning up trash and try to have community cleanups at this beach and I would love for your group to get involved in this topic as far as education well we have we, we have cleaned up a lot you know when, whenever we're out there and we see trash we pick up trash no, that's the other good thing is is what we've noticed ever since we started this project when we first started we basically were dealing with a lot of vagrants vagrants, fishermen, and all different types of things, dropping trash, we'd see it all, basically almost people living out there. The one good thing we've noticed is that we, since now we have the bicycle traffic and foot traffic, they don't like being seen, so they've moved on. So it's well, we a big cleaner house one since too. then. I'm sorry. We also <laughs> recruited one to help. Yeah, well, that's a little <laughs> But, <laughs> so, the one thing I think is that we have helped in cleaning the area in many ways because of the park being there, so. <laughs> oh, I know. We have that problem everywhere as far as, you know, the lady said that we don't put the trash there. Let's put the trash there. Sometimes it floats in. Oh, my God. It's built on a dump, basically, so we're always picking up that dump. It's kind of a two problem. Time running. Um, we have this whole area up here, uh, the Durham Trail area. Is there any plans to move more trees in that area? Yes, sure. that's part of the, the answer part to the lady's this? question as far as what will you do with the additional 200,000. We're going to be planting grids of trees and shrubs in these areas. And if we get more money, what we'll be able to do is expand and put them on a denser network. That is, in this area, the Durham Trail would be an area where we would then use some of these additional funds, not only for maintenance, but also for additional trees and shrubs. So, you know, again, Sometimes you work with what you have, and then if you have more money, you go in and plant it denser. Okay, and then the other side of my, my second statement is to advocate your, your comments about how fast things grow here. People really want to see how fast, even though they are invasive. If you go to the pit and look at where we built the Bad Race Course, that little hill we built, there are 20 foot tall trees sitting on top of it, even though they are pines, but I mean, that was a year ago, and we've already got these huge trees. Right? Yeah, they do grow fast. So, that's, I'm just, but they are yeah. fast growing invasives, that's why they're invasive. But do we have any natural trees that grow that quick? Not that grow that quick. But we, have, we, we do have, Joe, we do have natives that grow very fast. And again, I, I think. Oh, I'm we'll saying see. not that quick, but yes. Yeah, yeah. Any chance of more mature trees being yes. put up well, instead of yes. smaller ones? Yes, one yes, yes. And that's a, another good answering her question. If we have more money, we'll be able to buy bigger trees. So the more money, the, you can build this Rolls Royce versus, you know, this Chevy, you know, so, yeah. I, I know you said two more, but you know what, we got to give George a chance, please, if you can. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. um, George. First of all, thanks for coming out today. Um, I really appreciate it. There's a lot of questions I had. Um, and I look forward to working with you in the future on things that happen to this park. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all stewards of this land. It's public land for everybody's use, not only mountain bikers. Not only yeah. Bikers. So, uh, my question is, is more basic, um, and it deals more with the master plan. And, you know, master plans are done years ago, and they just take time to be implemented. So my question is, how often do you amend that master plan? What is that process, and what is the community involved in that master plan? <laughs> Can you add to that question how many people are in this room that are for the project and how many people are here for the trails? You know, shows the community support in one direction or another. This is uh, hold on, hold on. I, I can tell you the answer. Two different questions. This is the answer first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been working with the community for a long time. Uh, we've been working with the community for a long time. As far as the master plan goes, the master plan basically establishes certain parameters and 
guidelines in which you have to operate with. <laughs> it's not something that is a straight line and you can't deviate, you can't move in that particular line. Uh, situation, circumstances, regulations, they change over the course of several years. I mean, there's, there's new legislation that comes out, there's new regulations that come out. So as a result, something's going to modify because of that. Uh, there are funding considerations, and sometimes the modifications are because of that. As you see with the master plan that was previously presented, uh, we're operating within those parameters and those guidelines. We're making some compromises. We're making some adjustments as we go. But the intent and in particular areas and the phases uh, of, what, of what that master plan was developed <coughs> for is, is, is our guide. And we're trying to operate within those parameters and making some adjustments. It's kind of like you're driving down I-95 and there's all of a sudden you see that there's something that around you did a little bit of a deviation, but you still continue on the road of I-95. So I hope that kind of answers your question. It's not something that, you know, there's one sentence in that master plan and that, you know, you can't modify it, you can't change it. But at the same time, we can't just, you know, revisit a master plan every time we have a meeting or every time we have a project because there is a process that we went through in developing the original master plan to begin with. And it was open and there was a lot of input, there was a lot of discussion and a lot of professionals that cross participated in that process. Oh, and, and I agree. And I don't think the intent or, or the, the intent of my question was, hey, let's redo it because we have a bunch of mountain bikers that just want to make trails all over the place. My question is, as things evolve, places evolve, you know, people evolve, things evolve. So my question is, you know, as these things happen, how do you, you know, obviously you make those small adjustments with laws and things that happen, but how do you kind of revisit that to say, hey, we did this 20 years ago, does it really make sense to continue this path, or should we relook at it and revamp it and have all this new community input? Because maybe the people that put that plan together 20 years ago or whenever it was done, you know, aren't here anymore. Maybe that's just not the, the vision. It of was what? 2010, three, oh, three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah, okay. it, it, we don't want to go through that process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know they're painful. I know. But 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 area seven, which is that area we've been talking about with the expansion, and it's a little barren right now. Whatever is an example of that. There's a master plan or whatever, and there was an area that we made some adjustments to it and allowed that to work. You know? So, I mean, it, we do make some adjustments as we go. But I was thinking, uh, is there like a topic, a way to find out when, when these things have been agreed on? Like the parking spaces, again, I think 100 parking spaces is kind of. Uh, I want you to know also <laughs> that. But I know that's, it can be changed. Believe it, believe it or not, Virginia Key, it was part of my 21, my 21 process. There was I extensive that. community. So it was extensive Very discussions. Uh, it was a painful process for many. So the master plan fits in within my A21, the zoning, there's conservation protective areas. That's, it was all, I mean, it's all interrelated one to another. It's just not, you know, one little group coming together. And they have it. So it's, it's been better. I, I whispered to Gary, too, something. When the master plan was being developed in 2008, 9, 10, when it was finally accepted, originally, the the master plan didn't have no tracking at all. So it goes to show that when you find a use that people want and are willing to get behind, it, 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 it morphs. It changes. It does. It, it's natural. I mean, you know, when when the original group, the original president all came and said, we want to do this, we got behind him. It, it, it did it. And you're here because we got behind him and did it. And you're going to stay. I mean, you're here. We know that. We're working together to make it work. Um, my name is Sam Bandler. I'm with Urban Paradise Hill. Some of y'all know me, some not. Um, I've been involved in this process since about 2007. And actually, going back before that, I grew up on Key Biscayne. And I saw that every five or ten years, there was somebody trying to privatize Virginia Key. Somebody trying to turn it into a free place for developers. And because of the community coming together and saying, we want recreation and natural areas because the whole community came together and wanted to make this happen. Frankly, that's why North Point is happening. And even though I'm not a biker myself, I'm proud to work with bikers, we actually have adopted Amelia Earhart County Park and we plant habitat in the trails. Uh, and by the way, anybody who wants to come out, this Sunday we're at Olita, next Sunday we're at Amelia. So feel free to come out and plant trees with us. Anyway. A point being that this exists because there was solidarity in the whole community to 
for recreation in natural areas. If the whole community had not been behind this, we wouldn't even be talking about mountain bike trails today. There would be a convention center being built there. So I want you to really think about that, that it's the whole community that made this happen, and that as much as mountain biking is an awesome thing, this is not just a mountain biking park. This is for the whole community. And so I think that you guys should think of it as something that we all share together. And I'm really proud to have been a part of this. I put a lot into creating this master plan along with many other people. I listened to people. I literally made sure that the mountain bikers had a place at the mm -hmm. table during the charade. So, you know, I think that what we need to do is have the solidarity, have the collaboration. Gary Milano is the real deal. He is as nice a guy as you're going to find. Work with him. He will work with you. And many of you have already seen this. So, you know, I really appreciate all the time you guys have put in. Believe me. Volunteerism, we are a volunteer-powered organization. We would not exist without volunteers. So when you guys talk about sweating blood out there in the trails, hey, I understand, and I totally respect it. But please also respect all the time that people have put into this master plan as well. So anyway, thank you very much. Well, that, that wraps up pretty well. Um, I think this conversation, thanks, Sam. And I would just throw out that um, what is a natural area if it's not being used and appreciated, and you guys are, are, are a wonderful presence there. I'm happy we could come together. Uh, on behalf of the city of Miami, uh, Commissioner Sarnoff's office, Miami-Dade County, Durham, the Science Museum. Um, and I'd like to particularly thank Tom for, for helping with that. Spelling bees in about how long? 30 seconds. When in doubt, sound it out. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.